Hey everyone, this is something we went through the actual stream and I thought I'd cut the video out and upload it. We did have the previous video's top comment, so here it is. Thank God someone actually outdone the one from Taz, because that would have been really difficult to read, so... Whew. But the top comment today is from Stephen Lacey 2995 and he says, let's just put it out there, mystery publisher Jim Ryan. This is in reference to my Christopher Dring video where he said he knows a major publisher and obviously he's taking the piss by saying that Jim Ryan is the mystery publisher. I mean, who knows? It could very well be. But I thought it was funny nonetheless and definitely better than the one <laughs> and easier to read than the one Taz put out there. But anyway, on with the video. Thank you so much for the comment. So let's have a look at this. All right. So Phil Spencer wants Epic Game Store and others on Xbox consoles. To grow the console market, Xbox will need to be more like PC. So what does he mean by that? Phil Spencer doesn't just want Xbox games on other consoles, he wants other video game retailers on Xbox too. In an interview with Microsoft CEO of gaming during an annual game developers conference, Spencer told Polygon about the ways he'd like to break down the walled gardens that have historically limited players to making purchases through the first party stores tied to each console. Or in layman terms, why you should be able to buy games from other stores on Xbox not just the official front. So he's essentially there saying that he wants the Xbox to be a hub for everything. Spencer mentioned his frustrations with closed ecosystems. So we, are, we asked for clarity, could he really see a future where stores like Itch.io and Epic Games Store existed on Xbox? Was it just a matter of figuring out mountains of paperwork to get there? Yes, said Spencer. Our history as a, the Windows company, nobody would blink twice if I said, Hey, when you're using a PC, you get to decide the type of experience you have by picking where to buy games. There's a real value in that. Spencer believes console players would benefit from that freedom too. And so would console makers like Microsoft. See, I don't get this. What he's saying here essentially is he wants a Windows based console that you can install Steam, you can install Epic and all of these stuff. But that stops becoming an Xbox. That just becomes an ATX, you know, a mini PC, right? That, that becomes an ATX box PC, right? Uh, am I missing something here? Because you can do that right now. Because you can do that right now. What he's describing here is just a shuttle PC that is powerful enough with custom hardware to be able to play it. That's, that's, that's literally all he's saying. Um, and that exists today. Spencer explained how in the past, console makers would typically subsidize the cost of expensive hardware, knowing that a portion of every dollar spent on games for the platform over the years would eventually make it back to the console maker. So well, this is what's called the attach rate. So when a console gets released, generally they sold for um, at a loss. And you would need to sell, sell between one and three copies of games. Like when you bought the console, if you just bought the console on its own and went home, Microsoft made a loss on that purchase. If you bought the console and then bought another two games with it, at that point, Microsoft made a profit on that purchase because the two games that you bought would cover the game's cost. And then on top of the game's cost, it would cover the deficit. That is what the console was losing money on. And it's essentially make a profit on that. And so they make a, a return of interest is called the attach rate. Um, during the Dreamcast days, the attach rate used to be one game. Once the 360 came out, the attach rate increased to two. I'm guessing now with the free, uh, the Series X, I mean, the Series S is probably gonna uh, be making profit on its own, but the Series X on the other hand probably needs an attach rate of two or three games at the very minimum, just like the PS5. Then, in time, the console maker would recoup the sub subsidy, and hopefully more. But Spencer said Moore's loss has slowed down. The price of the components of a console aren't coming down as fast as they have in previous generations. Worse, he explained, the console market isn't growing. This is true. It is not growing. All that's happening is that the same players in ratio are shifting between one and the other, but it's not actually expanding. It's 
it's just still staying the same stagnant size that it is. We've seen this in multiple different reports now, and forcing players to purchase games through the official storefront to help recoup costs might not make sense. The walls meant to lock people into consoles might be motivating them to stay out. Subsidizing hardware becomes more challenging in today's world, and I will say this may seem too altruistic, I don't know that it's growing the industry, so I think what are the barriers? What are the things that create friction in today's world for creators and players? And how can we be part of opening that, opening up that model? And this is something Microsoft likes to do, right? They like to push ahead and be the first to make that giant leap into the great unknown. We saw this with Xbox One, with the Connect, with the whole, you know, watching TV on your consoles that everyone ridiculed, but everyone is doing that today with their PS5s and their Nintendo Switches, watching Netflix, you know, on their Series Xs, watching TV and YouTube and other stuff. Maybe you're not, but I see so many of my friends doing that on either platform. They use it as their general medium now to watch Netflix, Amazon Prime, Apple TV, YouTube, something that Microsoft did with the Xbox One launch that every single one ridiculed them for, fast forward today and everyone is doing what they laughed at Microsoft for. The difference is Microsoft tries to take these leaps way too early. They wanna be the first, they wanna be the ones that pioneer it. And at the end of the day, just because you're making that leap first, like Stadia saw, doesn't mean it's always going to work. Maybe just people aren't ready for it. Maybe the technology just isn't right now. That's been a problem that Microsoft has had for a long time and they kind of need to fix that. The answer in part is scrapping exclusivity on more and more Xbox games. Spencer explained that the game experience is hindered when it matters what consoles we play on or what shops sell us our games. As an example, he pointed to Sea of Thieves. A player, he explained, shouldn't have to worry about what hardware hardware they or their friends own. They should just know if their friends have and want to play Sea of Thieves. So what he's saying here is that games should be, you know, multiplayer games like Sea of Thieves should be cross-play out of the box. Hey, Phil, great job. How about making Elder Scrolls Online cross-play? You know, that would work. How about making Fallout 76 cross-play? That would work. How about making the plethora of other games that you keep badgering on about cross-play? These games are already available multi-platform after all. Why don't you actually be a man and stick behind your words? Oh no, you can't do those games though, can you? It doesn't work for those games. Uh, now Spencer said, if I want to play on a gaming PC, then I feel like I'm more a continuous part of a gaming ecosystem as a whole. As opposed to on console, my gaming is kind of sharded to use a gaming term based on these different closed ecosystems that I have to play across. I mean, Xbox is pretty much one of the most open platforms outside of PC. You can play almost anywhere. Spencer's view sounds reasonable on paper. The console market is flat. It is. The PC market is growing in part because it gives players a choice in where they buy games. So if consoles want to bring players back, they'll need to be more like PCs. And that means bringing down the walled gardens that for decades have protected the financial model of game consoles. If Spencer wants to make that vision a reality, then it's reasonable that we could one day boot up our Xboxes and see Epic Game Store, itch.io and other shops waiting to sell us games and hopefully competing with one another to bring players the best possible deals. Now here's my question. If they're going to do this, they're essentially building a PC. Now, I know people are going to say consoles are essentially a PC anyway, but there's still custom hardware in there, right? There is still custom APUs in there, there's still custom CPUs in there, and there's still custom technology in there that doesn't, uh, you know, pertain to PCs. That's just not there, right? You've got that, you know, magical velocity architecture that's never ever used, but they keep toting it. That's not in PCs. You've got direct storage that only one game uses on PC that's never been used on Xbox. You've got all sorts of different things that are there. But what he's saying here is that he wants Xbox to become a PC. And if that's what he wants, that's fine. But what he's essentially saying is we're going to design an Xbox to be a PC, but it's going to have a skin 
So you don't have to deal with all that Windows stuff. You don't have to deal with all that uh, Windows update and all that stuff behind it. All of that is going to be done automated. You're going to get your console experience. And what you're going to have is when you boot it up is you're going to have your Xbox store. You're going to have Game Pass. You're going to have GeForce Now. You're going to have Steam. You're going to have Epic Games. You're going to have GOG. You're going to have Ubisoft Connect and all of them all in one place. You're essentially going to have Amazon Luna but in a form where you can natively download it. And though that prospect sounds interesting, what I want to know is how that is different to what we have today. And I don't know, but maybe you guys do. And uh, so if you do, let me know in the comment section below and let's have that discussion.